Hey guys, how's it going? Mark here from Ogitog, uh, and today we are going to be taking a bit of a road trip. Uh, we're here on the beautiful island of Okinawa, lovely sunny day. I'm trapped in my little uh, Japanese car, uh, but we're going to take a, 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 a drive to the north of the island. It's probably going to take a couple of hours, um, but what I want to do today is I want to show you how I shoot the ocean, uh, and more so how I shoot the ocean using uh, long exposure, uh, but not massive long exposures. Uh, what I want to show you is how I shoot enough to get good motion blur, to get a nice dynamic feel to the image, but also to retain all of the detail with regards to uh, in the highlights especially. Um, and I'm going to be using an array of uh, canny filters uh, in order to accomplish that. Let's head north, uh, let's get to where we need to go, and uh, I will show you how I go about shooting the ocean once we get there. Awesome. taken a while to get up here but uh, hopefully with the uh, with the magic of time-lapse it went just like that um, this is a pile of rocks in the north west coast of um, Okinawa such good compositions for long exposure photography especially when you want to get um, water that's washing over rocks uh, and through kind of like rocky kind of structures um, We'll take a walk down to the uh, shoreline and I'll show you exactly what I'm on about. This is one of my favourite locations in northern Okinawa. I'll switch the camera around in a minute just so you can see what we're looking at. But this location is absolutely perfect for long exposure. Well, it looks like I found my first composition. There's these nice rocks here. Every now and again, you get this nice big wave that come, comes over and just, there you go. It covers over these, uh, these two rocks. Um, my vantage point is gonna be just to the left of where you see that uh, left-hand rock there. Uh, I'm gonna go and get set up. And uh, once I'm set up, I'll take you through how it is I'm gonna go and shoot this scene. Before I actually start shooting, I uh, just, just want to go through a couple of things. Uh, first off, let's just get the camera, chuck that on the tripod. Uh, I'm shooting with the uh, Lauer 12mm uh, zero distortion. Okay, beautiful lens, nice and sharp. And when I, when I tend to shoot the ocean, I try to get as much ocean in it as possible. I want to get as much motion, as much water, everything, just to try and make a dynamic image as possible. Okay, and you can see behind me that the ocean's moving quite a bit, so hopefully we'll be in for some, uh, in for some good imaging. A few months ago, some of you may or may not have seen a video that I made about the two filter holders that I use. Uh, one is uh, the uh, proprietary filter holder from uh, Lauer, the people that make this lens but the negative side of that and what I see is the uh, is a design fault with that if you haven't seen the video check it out it's up here but what I am glad to say in the interim is that the wonderful people at Canny they have since now produced uh, an adapter ring that will allow me to use their filter holder with this lens. You'll, you'll feel it when it slips on and once it does slip on just turn it anti-clockwise until it doesn't go anymore and then you just tighten down that grub screw. What you'll also notice is that I've got the um, circular polarizer on again from Canny uh, because I'm photographing uh, wet or damp rocks I obviously want to try and reduce as much as possible 
the reflection that I get from those rocks. So circular polarizer. In order to put the, uh, the filter holder on, all I do then is you've got your filter holder. I've got the spring loaded catch here. So on the other side, you've got the mechanism for turning the um, circular polarizer. So all I do first off is I'll marry that side up, pull that spring loaded, oh, pull the spring loaded system out, let it go, and now it's in place. And now if I want to turn, if I want to operate the uh, polarizer, all I do is I rotate that little wheel on the side and that will allow me then to set my polarization point. Okay? And then obviously my filters just go down in the holder, nice and snug. Uh, but I've got the camera set up. I'm uh, shooting. Hold on, where are we? At F16. Okay, I've got a uh, ND32 on. Now, we are in the middle of the day, but uh, we've got quite a bit of cloud cover. So, a lot of the light has been absorbed by that. We don't have direct sunlight, which is good, uh, because we don't have the really harsh shadows. Um, so, I've got an ND32 on. Okay, and on top of that, what I'm using, because we have an unobstructed uh, horizon, I'm using the uh, premium uh, hard uh, gradual neutral density filter, the 0 0.6. Um, and all of that together, that allows me to hit my preferred slow shutter in this kind of condition, when we've got all of this white water washing over the rocks of uh, between 1.3 seconds and 1.6, okay? At the moment, I'm set at 1.3 seconds, uh, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. I, I wait for a nice wave to come in, take a shot, and you'll see exactly how we've got all of that motion, but we've still got a lot of detail in the white, which is uh, quite nice because you see all of the way that the whites are uh, running around the rocks all of the white water so uh, now it's just a waiting game wait for a wave to come along yep the set to come here we go uh -huh. yep there we go nice Okay, well we've got some fantastic shots from this particular composition. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to have a look around. We're going to change, uh, change location within this immediate area and uh, see if we can come up with some more awesome compositions using uh, you know, the, the, a few, few of the other filters that I've got here uh, just to see if we can change the whole aesthetic up a bit. Okay, let's see what we can get. composition behind me okay got these lovely waves hitting over all of these rocks here but this point here is just to show you that you don't necessarily have to take the shot to get the, the best uh, aesthetic from this kind of uh, image don't you don't always have to wait until the wave splashes over the rock because all you get at that point is just a complete blanket of white covering the rocks. One of the best things that you can do in this kind of situation, I've retained all the same settings, okay, um, although now I'm on oops, F16, ISO 100, I've got an ND32 on, again with the uh, 0.6 hard uh, gradual neutral density filter. Um, everything's set up, I've got the polarizer set, but what I want to show you is on, with this kind of imaging, a really nice aesthetic is to wait until the water is almost receding, and then take the shot. And what you'll find are the whites are very suave, 
you get nice lines around the rocks okay and you don't just get this really thick blanket of white uh, because of, because you've just got too much white water okay so let's go ahead and see if we can wait for a wave and then we'll get the once the water starts to recede like this that's when we take the shot okay so let's see how we go here we are we've got a nice wave coming in now just let it break it's a lot of white water there wait for it to start receding take the shot and I got the shot just before that other wave started coming in so let's now wait for this to recede take the shot very nice aesthetic with that one It's getting on for later in the afternoon. In fact, we've probably got about an hour uh, until we get uh, sunset. But um, we've got the cloud cover back. Today's weather has been up and down like crazy. Um, and I've set up this really nice composition here. Looks like we're going to have a really, really nice image. Um, the sun's just going to, it's in line for where it's going to set right now. It hasn't set yet. It's just behind the line of. Uh, a line of um, clouds but very soon it's going to start peeking peeking out from behind those clouds um, to compensate for that ISO 100 f8 we've got a an ND128 with a reverse grad uh, 1.2 and my shutter speed is 3.2 seconds okay so I'm gonna wait for a nice amount of water to come in the Sun is still the Sun is still above the clouds so we, we haven't got the direct sun in the shot uh, but that will come a bit later so let me just wait for a nice wave to come in and we'll get another awesome shot Well, we're coming up to sunset now. Um, probably, uh, hold on. But about another half hour before sunset. So uh, I'm going to get set up for my go-to sunset uh, setup, and that is reverse grad 1.2 uh, mixed with the ND16. I should be on about uh, ISO 100. Um, F8 or F11 and trying to hit my golden shutter um, speed of uh, 1.6 seconds okay let's get set up because I've still got the old setup uh, on the camera so let's go ahead and uh, just swap that out I'm going to uh, let's go to portrait mode portrait orientation Whoop. switch that around okay now well I'm going to start taking a few shots now because it looks like we've got a band of cloud above the horizon which means we're not going to get the sun going into the ocean unfortunately um, so ready to go I've got uh, I'm shooting the uh, Lauer 12 mm f2.8 I've got the Canon filter holder on it with the adapter for the Lauer um, I'm using a reverse grad 1.2 with an MD16 okay at the moment I'm shooting at F16 um, I'm on ISO 160 everything's set good to go I'm on a shutter speed of 1.6 seconds 
just got to wait for a wave to come in to get some nice water movement and off we go. There it is folks. As close as we're going to get to sunset here I think. I'm going to persevere uh, and later on I might just do a super long exposure just for the hell of it. <coughs> but for the most part this is uh, the last few minutes with sunshine. <laughs> 